On the table in front of me, I have balled up sheets of paper, some giant puffed marshmallows, and some steel wool. There are a lot of videos on the internet that show you exactly what happens when you touch the leads of a 9 volt battery to the fine steel wool. But most of these videos fail to demonstrate the very interesting thing that happens to the weight of the steel wool during this combustion reaction. And it is very different from burning other things like pieces of paper and marshmallows. So to find out what that interesting thing is, stick around because this homeschool science lesson starts right now. In this video, we will be setting several things on fire, and the focus of the video will be about the law of the conservation of matter. We will talk about that and the very famous chemist who discovered it named Anton Lavoisier in just a second. But first, let's start setting some things on fire. To prove the point of the video, one of the objectives of the experiment is to take the weight of everything that we're going to set on fire before we set on fire, and then reweigh it after it has been set on fire. And I suspect, or I probably wouldn't be making this video, that the steel wool is going to behave slightly differently than the marshmallows and the paper. First thing we're going to do is take our scale and zero our tin pan, and then add our balled up sheets of paper. Obviously, as true budding scientists, we're going to be recording our results, and that also simultaneously helps us cover our number writing for the day. We can see that the pre-combustion weight of our paper is 16 grams. And of course, our experiment today is being done in an open system. An open system is a system in which an experiment can exchange its matter and energy with its environment as the experiment is ongoing. Unlike a closed system, which does not allow any exchange of matter while the experiment is ongoing. Think of a closed system as doing an experiment inside a Yeti tumbler. Once you seal it off, that water can't escape because it's a closed system. Since we are setting our paper on fire in an open system, we can see that as the paper becomes lighter, some of it is blown away with the wind and some really light pieces just float away into the environment. Anton Lavoisier said matter could not be gained or lost in a closed system. As you can see here, however, this is quite the open system and we are clearly losing pieces of paper to the environment. So it very much stands to reason that when we reweigh our paper products, it's going to be significantly less than what we started with. And remember, we started with a weight of 16 grams. And once the experiment is over, we place it back on the scale and you can clearly see we are down now to three grams. And because of the law of the conservation of matter, that clearly indicates we did this experiment in an open system. Now let's see what happens when we do the exact same thing with marshmallows. You can see here that we're going to start with the weight of 36 grams. And unlike paper, when we burn the marshmallows, pieces of it are not going to become so light that they just fly away into the atmosphere. Everything should stay in the tin and our weight should stay the same according to Lavoisier's conversation of mass. But look what happens. Our pre-weight combustion was 36 grams, and after setting them on fire, it's now 33 grams. We have clearly lost some mass during this chemical reaction. At the beginning of the video, I said steel wool does something completely different during its combustion when you reweigh it. So to understand why it behaves differently, let's look a little bit closer at the marshmallows to see exactly what happens. You see, here we have a marshmallow, and a marshmallow's main ingredients are sugar, some proteins, and some carefully infused air. But for the purposes of this reaction, we're just going to focus on the sugar and all of the atoms that make up that delicious molecule, specifically the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. So to make our sugar molecule, we have our carbon atoms in purple, our hydrogen atoms in yellow, and our oxygen atoms will be red. The hallmark of any sugar molecule is a strong carbon backbone like you see here. Oxygen and hydrogen atoms attach to the carbon atoms in various ways accounting for various different types of sugars. You can see how our bead molecule looks very similar to an actual glucose molecule. Now when we light our marshmallows on fire, the sugar in the marshmallows react with the oxygen in the air, and let's see what happens. Here we have our glucose molecule, and now we're going to add oxygen from the surrounding environment. The oxygen atoms actually steal a carbon atom from the sugar molecule. This forms a new molecule with one carbon and two oxygens. Now the two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom that were attached to the carbon form their own molecule. Now to truly understand what's going on, let's focus on those two molecules. As we get rid of the remaining atoms of our sugar molecule, let's bring the other two molecules to the center. Remember, one molecule had two oxygens and one carbon, and the other molecule had two hydrogens and one oxygen. A molecule with one carbon and two oxygens might sound familiar, as well as a molecule with two hydrogens and one oxygen. The first one is carbon dioxide, and the second one is water. So when we reweigh our burned marshmallows, it should be obvious that the new weight of the marshmallows is going to be minus all of the carbon dioxide and water vapor that we lost to the environment in our open system during the experiment. 
And as you can see, that's what happened because we started with marshmallows weighing 35 grams and after the chemical reaction, our final weight was 32 grams, meaning we lost three grams of carbon dioxide and water to our open environment. So far in the video, we've shown you that when you burn paper, it weighs less. When you burn marshmallows, they weigh less. So now let's look what happens to the steel wool when we set it on fire. Here we can see that the starting weight of our steel wool is 48 grams. All that's left to do now is to light the steel wool and observe the combustion reaction. If you spread the fibers out, the reaction will continue until all the steel wool has combusted. Unlike the paper, nothing is being blown away when it becomes too light. Unlike the marshmallows, no gas, water, or other gaseous products are being released into the environment. In fact, nothing is lost. So why does it weigh more? To understand this is to understand that we are actually replicating a very similar experiment Anton Lavoisier did back in the late 1700s. Here I'm going to break off a strand of steel wool. And now we're going to use our magic magnifier to blow it up real big. Steel is actually a mixture of carbon and iron, making it an alloy. An alloy is a mixture of at least two elements. One of the elements is going to have to be a metal. The purpose of an alloy is to make a substance that is stronger than the individual elements would have been by themselves. What makes the combustion of steel different from the combustion of sugar is when it reacts with oxygen, it forms a compound called iron oxide. Unlike carbon dioxide, which is a gas and floats away, iron oxide is still a solid. So basically the oxygen actually sticks to the iron and forms a new compound versus floating away in the environment like the carbon dioxide did in the sugar combustion. So at the start of the experiment, before combustion began, our steel wool weighed 49 grams. And after completing combustion at the end of the experiment, you can see the weight had increased to 69 grams. It's kind of crazy to think that the steel wool is stealing 20 grams of oxygen during the experiment. So in summary, the combustion of sugar creates carbon dioxide gas, and that's lost to the environment in an open system, causing the marshmallows to weigh less after the experiment. In contrast, the combustion of iron creates iron oxide, which is a metal compound which weighs more than iron itself, which is why the iron weighs more when you reweigh it after it combusts, and that's also in an open system. But remember, according to the law of the conservation of matter, discovered by the French chemist Anton Lavoisier, if you did everything in a closed system and could account for all the atoms both before and after the experiment, everything would still weigh the same. I can't tell you how much I love doing experiments that involve food for obvious reasons. Don't forget the accompanying worksheet will be posted on our website pretty soon. It'll be free to download and you can give it to your kids to use however you'd like for your homeschooling or any educational needs. I don't know how many worksheets we've posted so far, but I think it's in the mid twenties. Again, they're all free to download. So I hope you get some use out of them. I will put links in the description to everything that we use here regarding the steel wool that you can pick up on Amazon and even that scale that we use pretty regularly in our household for, for science experiments like this. It's battery operated and it comes in real handy for science and math experiments. So that's all down below. If you get any benefit from this please consider liking and subscribing i hope you have a great day everybody and see you next week